for joining this OVA webinar. Um, today our topic is Wobblers Go to Hollywood, using webcam eye tracking and Hollywood style special effects to test and optimise point of sale materials. In a moment I'll hand over to Mike Follett who's the Managing Director of Lumen Research, a leading attention technology company. Lumen actually won two MRS awards in 2019 and this is the innovation award paper that they're going to present today. So without further ado, I'll hand it over to Mike. Hello everyone, um, it's Mike here. Um, I, I usually find these webinar things really quite disconcerting because you're talking into a camera or something, but it looks like that this is just a taste of the future. Uh, we're all gonna be doing this. So um, I'm very grateful for you all joining and I hope you're all um, safe and that everyone in your family is uh, is holding up and um, yeah, and, and, and they're all washing our, our, our hands. Um, so um, I, what I wanted to do is just talk you through the, um, uh, the, the awards case paper that we gave to the guys at the MRS um, uh, back in uh, October and November. So it's the, just exactly the same thing as, as, as we gave those people. Um, and I'm gonna talk for about uh, 20 minutes um, and then there'll be time for questions at the end. And I understand that um, uh, you can uh, type in your questions uh, as you go along in, in there and uh, we can um, uh, answer them as we go along. But if there's anything that's super, super urgent, the guys at Aura said that they, 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 um, they can uh, interrupt me so that I can uh, answer any questions as, uh, in, 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 if it's for super urgent, but otherwise there'll be questions at the end. So just very quickly, um, uh, how's this gonna work? I'll come along. I'm so sorry, everyone. Weirdly, my um, uh, we have to get used to this as well. As a, as a, so yes, um, so just a little bit about Lumen, um, and then um, I can get into the case. So for those of you who, who don't know, we are an attention technology company. We have uh, we've been around for about six years, uh, measuring what people see rather than what they say they see. People are very good at ignoring stuff, it turns out, and they're good at ignoring ads, and they're good at ignoring posters, and they're good at ignoring um, point of sale materials. And so we have developed a technology that um, uh, records people's eye movements so that we can understand what they actually look at uh, rather than what they say they look at. And we work mainly um, in digital media, actually, evaluating what web, you know, how to improve websites or how to improve Facebook ads and, and, and things like that. And we work across a variety of media, TV and the, the digital and posters and uh, all that sort of stuff. Um, mainly, and, I, and finally, we work mainly for advertisers and retailers, people like Tesco and Co-op and BT and, and Alibas. Increasingly, as well, we've been working for big publishers. So we've been doing projects for, for Google and for uh, News UK and The Guardian and people like that. And then finally, our technology um, can be is being sold to other market researchers. So we work with Ipsos and Trinity McQueen, uh, which is a, a research agency in Leeds, and System One um, and um, uh, Hall and Partners and many other people. So if you wanted to access our technology, but you, you liked your existing researchers and you don't want to move accounts or anything like that, you can access Lumen technology through your, uh, many of your existing um, uh, researchers. Although, of course, if you wanted to, we'd be very happy to work direct uh, for you. So that's it about us. Um, uh, last year was, was quite a good year. We won a couple of awards. Um, uh, we won, as, as we said, we, um, uh, the, the two MRS awards. We also won an award at Mobile World Congress in, in, in Barcelona um, for our new technology that turns your phone webcam into an eye tracking camera that allows us to do eye tracking studies on mobile phones, which is pretty unique in the world. Um, we won something from the EU and from Campaign, and also we got awarded um, the top one of the, the top fifty innovative companies by the Grit Report. Um, if I'm frank, I'd never heard of the Grit Report uh, beforehand, but it's apparently very important in America. Um, and now that we've won an award, it's become very important to me too. Um, but uh, yeah. Uh, it, it, was a, it was a nice surprise to win something, but also to even find out that it existed. Um, so just um, uh, really quickly, we, we, like I said, we, we work across um, a variety of that. We, we work 
across above the line communications, ATL, um, uh, digital communications, direct and CRM, a lot of work on shopper, which is going to talk about today, and a lot of work for packaging. Um, and when we, when we do this work, a lot of our time is, is to work out about um, how to optimize designs so they actually get noticed. Should I go for the red ad or the blue ad? Is the, um, the pack with the, with the big logo better than the pack with the small logo? Um, so we do those sorts of projects. But having done lots and lots of them, we also have a, a lot of media data. How much attention do packs get in general, on average? You know, big ads get more attention than small ads in a newspaper, but how much more? Um, and so we do those sorts of studies to not just to evaluate the creative, but to, to put a price on the media and to, to act as a benchmark there. So, so, and that's very helpful for us because then we can work out what good looks like uh, across all of these different things. Anyway, that's the ad over. I apologize for, for starting with that, but hopefully you understand a little bit more about what we do. Uh, and then I can talk a little bit more about, about um, the work that we do for our clients and less about ourselves. So, my, today's going to be about point of sale materials and how we optimize those. Um, but it, we're going to start with some sort of broader understanding about attention in general and the importance of, of eye tracking um, in that. I started my career um, at DDB, the big American ad agency, and uh, we used to make lots and lots of print ads. And whenever we made, I was a planner there, I was a strategist, and whenever we made an ad, I would um, uh, be wheeled out to give a bit of a spiel about the ad before the creatives actually revealed it. And whenever we revealed the ad, you'd have, you'd have a bit of a spiel from me, yada, yada, yada. And then the creative wearing a, a, a black uh, polo neck jersey would then give his own version of yada, yada. And then would finally reveal this wonderful ad, often against a white background. And then me and the clients, you know, we'd sit around debating it and discussing it, looking at it in, in, in great detail, because this is very important to, to us. The problem is presenting ads like this is totally unrealistic. Because why we are all really interested in, in advertising and, and in marketing in general, because we are basically paid to be interested in these things. The rest of us, you know, normal human beings do not consume advertising like this. They consume it like this. We always see ads in context. And so when we're testing ads out of context, in isolation, we're in a sense ruining the experiment because you know we have to understand that we are weird as marketers. We're really unusual. We're literally paid to, to give a monkeys about advertising. So we look in great detail and, and so on. When people are reading the paper, as, as, as eye tracking can show, they don't know, they're not paid to look at the ads. And so here is a heat map from about 100 people reading uh, this, these pages of the Metro from 2015. And what you can see here is that people read the newspaper for the news. Um, that's what they're reading the newspaper for, and the advertising is secondary. And that's why you can see two ads here. There's one for Boots, which is a very good ad, it's not bad ad. And then there's one for a, a movie. And you can see that the movie, I think, has Zac Efron in it. And Zac Efron is very, very interesting. And so that ad gets much more attention than Nappies, which I think are very important, but, but uh, perhaps not as interesting as Zac Efron. Um, and then, um, uh, you know, and the heat maps are quite useful here to, to tell you about the reality. But, it, you know, we're a data company, so you can start putting some numbers to this. And what you can see here is with this ad here, 100% of people could have seen this ad. It's a, it's a print ad, so, so the ad sort of loads at the same time as the content. Um, that doesn't always happen with digital ads, um, but it certainly happens because the ad actually printed on the same piece of paper as the uh, as the content. So it's 100% of people could have seen that. If you're thinking in, in, in digital terms, that ad is 100% viewable, but only 72% of people actually bothered looking at it, which means about 30% of people, 28% of people, just ignored that ad entirely. And then the second thing is they could have looked at it for ages and ages. They could have looked at it on average for, I think, 21 seconds. That's how long that the ad was available to be seen. But in actual fact, on average, this ad got looked at for 0.8 seconds. And, um, and you might ask the question, less than a second. How could anyone read all that in less than a second? 
And the answer is, they don't. No one read the whole of the ad. In actual fact, you can see from the, the heat map here, um, they looked at the now for some people anyway, looked at the now for three, now three for eight quid, but not a soul looked at the roundel above the third nappy saying, love it or your money back. And very few, and not a soul looked at the stuff in the in the bottom left hand corner saying order and collect. Um, or you know, and you can imagine all the various debates about how many how many roundels should I put in the ad, and you know, can I you know would it be better with this or that or the other? The eye tracking is really quite re revealing because it shows that no one looked at any of these things. Um, and in actual fact, time and again, we find that the more you put in the ads, um, the less people notice them. Um, uh, at all, you know, they, they find it hard to see the wood from the trees uh, in, in that sense. Less is very frequently more when it comes to advertising. So hopefully you can see how useful have, uh, eye tracking it, it is um, here to understand the reality of attention. Just because people can see it doesn't mean that they will see it. Just because you put a load of text there doesn't mean that anyone will actually read it. Um, and eye tracking can help you understand what people do notice and what people don't and it allows you to a b test the creative work and also the media um, to work out well what is the the actual levels of attention and, and then how does that relate to things like recall or purchase intent or, or even buying um, so we've been doing that for, for, for years now and started off in print and, and, and tv but we've developed some technology, like I said, right at the start um, to make this work on computers and are now on mobile phones um, so that we can we can do large scale eye tracking on all over the place. Um, but that begs a question. What, what about point of sale materials? Um, now this is a this is a big deal because. Well, perhaps the eye tracking sort of reveals something here, which is that most people don't actually read the ads. Um, or look very intently at the TV ads that we um, that we put in front of them. Uh, most of the people glance at these things, and really they leave the actual purchase decision making for in um, per, you know, purchase decisions for in store. So the IDG um, estimates that eighty two percent of all FMCG purchases are actually you know, the decisions actually made in store, and then as a result, people spend a lot of money on packaging. Uh, and also on point of sale materials. Um, so Popeye, which is the gloriously named point of purchase association international, um, rather than the sailor, um, estimate that Popeye, Popeye estimate that you um, uh, that Britain we spend about one point six five billion pounds a year on point of sale material. Um, but despite this massive investment, we don't actually research this stuff an awful lot. Um, you know, when we do research it, well, sometimes people have, um, you know, explicit sort of qual and quant things. You actually go and ask people, what did you think about this? Or do you remember seeing that? But I think there's always a sort of slight feeling with point of sale materials that it doesn't really matter if anyone remembers it. Um, it's whether or not it drives sales is the important thing. So our, judging whether or not point of sale is good because people say it's good isn't necessarily a, a very clever way of, uh, of doing it. So another way of doing it is to do in-store tests. Uh, and what you might do is you might print up a whole lot of the green POS and then a print up a whole lot of other yellow POS. And then and what some stores you put the green stuff and some stores you put the yellow stuff and you do these sort of A B tests within uh, within stores. And that's pretty good. Um, at least you can see actual sales data uh, from that. But the challenge there is that you have to have looky likey stores, you have to have matched pairs of stores, and that can be quite difficult to do. And the second thing is, you have to print everything up. And that can be, you know, printing one thing is almost as expensive as printing, you know, a thousand of these things. The initial print run is where the, all the money is. And then you have to put it in store and put it up and down and make sure that the compliance is good and, uh, and so on. So a million and one things can go wrong there. So. Um, so as a result, people say they can do this, but often they don't actually do that. Another thing is um, to, when you're in store, you, if you're doing this in-store um, A-B test, you might also augment it with some eye tracking stuff. We do, and Lumen, we do an awful lot of these things where we get a select sample of say 10 or 20, or in some cases 100 people to wander around the store wearing eye tracking glasses and then working out what they notice. That's really good. It's also pretty expensive. 
and also suffers from the the, 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 the the previous problem, which is that you have to go and print all this stuff beforehand and put it in a store. So the, the, the test, the data you get out of that is very, very good, but it's not, it's not wildly sort of flexible and you can't do anything before it goes in store, um, which is often the, the time that you want to take a decision. Once you've printed it all up, it's a bit late. Um, and so increasingly people have been turning to, to things like VR, for instance, as another way of pre-testing your point of sale materials. Now, VR is fantastic. We have done it ourselves. The problem with VR that we find is that it is ludicrously expensive um, and it's a computer game. So you can get everyone to, 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 you can do it, you can slot it in. And I suppose that there's some very good, I mean, we've done it ourselves, um, but it is pretty pricey. Um, and then once you've got it, you have to get people to go and actually do the, the VR stuff, often with a headset or something like that. And it's quite expensive and time consuming and and cumbersome so i don't want to slag that off because i don't know but we've come up with a, a slightly different and slightly more agile way of doing it and um, it combines two innovations for one so we it was a slightly unfair of us um uh, entering this for one innovation because an actual product's got two for the price of one so you know we've got a bog off on um uh, on innovation um uh which is um i don't know and the, and, the, and, 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 and the two components of this bog off are, the first is this webcam eye tracking software that allows us to recruit people online um, and then get them to use their home computers to, um, uh, to, do, to, to run tests and, and, and use their, the, the webcam on their home computers to do the eye tracking. But then it, we combine it with some Hollywood style special effects. And this is the bit that I wanted to, to explain in a bit more detail uh, uh, with you. And that's why we've given this such a stupid title, uh, Wobblers Go to Hollywood. Um, so I, I, I apologize for the whimsy of, of, of that. So what we do is instead of making a VR um, environment, we just shoot a film. Uh, and we adopted um, this technology initially for the out of home industry um to try and help them understand how much more attention goes to digital screens versus static screens um for out of home advertising that's actually a much harder question than you might initially think because you could get people to do a load of road tracking um for, for digital screens in like one super shopping center or train station or something and then go and find another shopping centre or another train station and, and they've got static screens uh, 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 there and compare the difference. But in actual fact, you'd be comparing not just the difference in the screens, but you'd be comparing like, you know, how Liverpool Street Station does versus Victoria or, or, or even, you know, what, what attention patterns were like on a Monday versus attention patterns on a Tuesday when the lights are different or so. So to resolve that issue, we approached this company called Myriad. Uh, and we said, well, what we want to do is um, make a film of um, a, 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 of a street scene and then use your clever um, uh, 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 software and, and, and video editing skills to change the stuff that's in the film. And they looked back at us and said, is that all you want? Is that it? You know, we won an Oscar for the work we did on Black Swan. You know, I can turn Natalie Portman into an angel, and what you want me to do is just swap a poster in a in a in a film. And I said, yes, that's all I want. And they went, okay then, uh, give us the money. And um, and this is what we. So this is an example of some of the stuff that we've been using for the out of home industry. Here is Oxford Circus, um, and um, uh, Oxford Street. Um, and uh, can you see there's a bus stop at the end of the, the road here? Can you see, it's a bit excuse because people are walking in front of it, and stuff, but can you see also there's a six sheet poster, like a bus stop style poster by the bus at the end of the road? And someone's walking in front of it right now, but can you, can you see that the poster is different in film one and film two? Do you get me? So the question for you is, which is the original one? And which is the one that we've doctored? 
And ordinarily, I'd have some sort of audience participation here and we'd get half the people to hand, put up their hand saying left and half the people saying right. Um, uh, we can't do that now. Uh, that's the, the world in which we live in now. It turns out it was the one on the right that was the original one and the one on the left, which is the one that we had doctored. So pat yourselves on the back if you got that right. But don't worry if you got that wrong, um, guys, because it doesn't matter. Um, the, um, but as you can see, what we can do from this is we can then use our webcam eye tracking technology to send those films out to people. 100 people can see version A and 100 people can see version B. And everything is the same. The only thing that's changed is the poster. And so you can get really strong and accurate data about how attention grabbing that poster is um, versus the norm. And, and here you see there were 65% of people noticed the ad here versus a norm of 41%. Uh, and they noticed it for 1.4 seconds, which is actually quite a long time, given the fact that these posters usually get about 1.2 seconds of attention. But then you can also have a look at like what bits of the poster people actually looked at. And, if they, you know, they, and then also what they looked at first and second and third, or in this case, fourth with the train line, um, not people not necessarily noticing the ads at all. And then finally, um, uh, you could um, uh, you can ask people questions at the end uh, uh, and get and, and link your attention data to um, uh, the, 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 the questionnaire data that we that we had there. So I was um, I was talking to a chap called uh, Nick Ma, who is lovely and uh, is the uh, uh, one of the, the, the senior uh, insight bods over at Tesco. And he, I showed him all this and we were talking about it. And he said, well, if you can do it outside a store, presumably you could do it inside a store as well. And this is one of those things that proves that innovation usually comes from uh, your clients. You know, you might have a load of good ideas, but you don't have half as good ideas as your clients do about how to use your technology. So I, I, I fully give credit to the guys at Tesco for basically coming up with this idea. Um, but on, on, on the basis, anyway, and the other thing to say is, it happened while we are, are after our second or third um, glass of wine over lunch, which again is proof positive why um, agencies should take clients out for lunch more because you genuinely get much better ideas that way around. Um, but anyway, he, he said, well, if you can do it outside, you can do it inside, and, and that's exactly what we've been doing. So here you can see uh, this is a, uh, this is just a snippet of a, of a film. But you can start seeing here again um, which uh, you know, the, 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 the different um, uh, header boards and hanging boards that we've got there. And um, you can start um, uh, inserting these things instead of having to print them all up and put them in store and then worry that, you know, day two is different from day one in the research. And stuff, you can, um, it takes about, you know, once you've got the films ready, it takes about 20 minutes to make new films and then a couple of days to do the research and then a couple of days to do the analysis and you have an answer within a week um and that's how we work so the way it works is um uh, now with the guys at tesco is uh they send or, and many of the clients now uh but they send us some pdfs of um point of sale materials um we then insert we work with in, in, um, uh, myriad to insert them into uh films that we've already shot um so it's really easy to to, to, to work with and uh, then, and that, that creates sort of a film A and a film B. Um, you know, what, some with a yellow POS and some with a red POS or, or what have you. We then go and recruit a load of people um, using sort of online recruiters, people like Dynata or Lucid or Sint. And we recruit those people to be exactly who you want them to be. So they could be um, Tesco shoppers or they could be Cadbury's buyers or they could be young mums or um, dog owners or whoever it is and we usually would recommend a sample size of about 150 per cell um, people are then shown uh, they download the software uh, uh, and um, uh, that turns their computers into a, the, the, the webcams into a, into a, um, a webcam uh, and there's an eye tracking camera we show them the films we then ask them other questions um, about to reveal you know you know uh, brand preference and, and, uh, and recall and perception and all of those uh, uh, things. If you like, we can show people the POS again in isolation and then ask them even more questions um, if you want. But at the end of it, everything is uploaded to the cloud. Uh, the software is deleted from people's machines. The software, by the way, is all GDPR compliant 
uh, people are people know they're being eye tracked. They don't know that they're interested in POS, but they know that they're being eye tracked. The data is is all processed locally on the machine. We don't we don't store any PII or personal identity yeah, personal identifying information or anything like that. Um, so it's all very safe and secure and GDPR compliant. And then when we get all this data, um, we can then uh, turn it into a lovely presentation for you with actionable recommendations that lead to profitable decision making. So here's, um, here's a heat map from um, just one of our recent um, studies for Tesco. Uh, and, and this is the sort of um, uh, uh, thing that you can uh, expect to get from that. And then you can start doing some charts uh, about what people noticed and uh, at all the percentage viewed um, uh, between the different designs and then the average dwell time how long people spent looking at, 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 at different things and that data can then be correlated to um, what item people clicked on at the end that, that they would buy or what they said that they were most interested in or their price sensitivity or or anything that we can get from a questionnaire at, at the end the key uses are mainly about creative optimization, so multivariant pre-testing. So if you're finding it difficult to choose between um, the red one or the yellow one, test both and you can get some actual data to see if red is better than yellow or the other way around. Um, or you know, um, if a simple, simple POS is better than busy POS, I'll give you that one for free. Simple is always better than busy. Um, when we do those tests, you, you get the A versus the B, but it's also useful to have normative benchmarks. You know, um, people look at POS for a very short amount of time, so it can be quite disappointing when I go back to clients and say, um, people only looked at your POS for, for a second and a half. And people go, God, I spent months on that, and people have only looked at it for a second and a half. And you go, well, the good news is most people look at this stuff for half a second. So in actual fact, you're doing very, very well. Um, but having those normative benchmarks is super, super important because you, you sort of understand what good looks like um, and, 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 and what you can really expect. No one is going to read an essay when they're at the point of purchase. It just doesn't happen. Um, and so understanding the, the general dynamics is really important to be able to, to advise you guys properly. And that means that we can do lots of best practice guidelines and even some, some cross-media comparisons. Um, it is useful to be able to say, well, what sort of shape of attention does POS get? Is it like a poster or is it like a cinema ad? Um, it's much more like a poster than a cinema ad. And, and, and being able to put it in that broader context is very, very helpful. It means that POS teams can, can push back on people saying, well, I'd like to have an ad's worth of um, content in there. You go, well, that's good for advertising, but it's not good for POS. Um, and so it, it, it helps within those broader discussions. That. But from that creative point of view, that's very, very helpful. We work with lots of um, retailers, obviously, but also brands who are looking to optimize the POS materials they have um, uh, for their own categories there. But we also use this tool for media valuation. So we can work out um, from this how much some formats are how much attention some formats get rather than other formats and how that attention then leads on to increased brand purchase you know how if you're being offered um a load of fins versus a load of wobblers for the same price which one should you get or if your pack of pos has, has lots and lots of header boards but doesn't have anything at the actual shelf edge is that a good thing or, or a bad thing we can also help with understanding things like flighting and frequency. How much POS do you actually need? It isn't just about the design of it, but it's simply the volume of it that, that's really important. And then for retailers, working out how much POS you should have at all. Most retailers, it appears, has far too much point of sale. There's too much stuff in store that's all competing for attention. So the, the trick is to have less POS, but make it work harder. Um, because otherwise people won't be able to see the, the wood for the trees, and so we can do that. Um, and understanding that allows people to do sort of yield management, to work out that, yes, I have fewer POS elements, but more people are spending more time with them, and therefore I can charge more, more for it. Um, 
and, and so that's uh, you know, or, or equally when you're a buyer of this media you can then work out well how much you're actually getting for, for, for. so um, as I said the, the, the size of the prize is about um, 1.65 billion we um, we found that we usually get about 11 you know from the studies that we've done we've been able to advise on about an 11 percent increase in reach for the point of sale by making the air make, making the POS simpler and more eye-catching or reducing the amount of POS and so on and so for these awards papers you always have to come up with some strange you know made-up number basically um, so we haven't I don't think we've genuinely made UK retailers uh, or, or brands 1 point, uh, 181 million but if they all took our advice it would have quite a big, a big event uh, effect on stuff and, to, and then the last thing is to say well, why, why do we think this works? Well, we think it's effective because it's very, very realistic and in context testing, which allows for data driven decision making. Instead of judging all this sort of stuff by gut feel or, or, or by the hippo's opinion, the, the highest paid person's opinion, um, you've got a, a realistic in context solution to, that allows you to really test between different things. It's very efficient. You can instead of just testing one thing versus another, you can test ten things, uh, and instead of waiting for these things to go uh, 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 live in store and, and seeing the results afterwards, you can test it um, uh, at speed without printing or installing anything, and um, to, to mean to make that you can actually make timely decisions uh, uh, across a, a wide, wide variety of variants. And crucially, uh, the last thing, it's very very scalable, so we can recruit, like I say anyone you like to do this your customers or the general population we can do it anywhere in the world so we've been doing these sorts of studies in australia and america uh, all from the comfort of north london where our offices are um, and it because it uses people's own home computers um in a, as fact is, is is very um uh cost effective as well because we don't have to drag people into a into a viewing facility or, or have a little kit we can use people's home computers which makes things very quick but also relatively speaking very cheap so there we go guys thank you very much um uh, uh for that i think there's uh, about 15 or 20 minutes uh uh for or oh, perhaps not less about like 50 minutes for, for, for questions um uh does anyone does anyone have anything that they'd like to ask um, yeah, Mike, actually, if uh, people do have questions, they can use the Q&A function, uh, which is at the bottom of your bottom of the Zoom screen. Um, we don't have anything at the moment, but please do submit your questions. Um, I've got one to start us off with. Um, have you, I'm sure you have, done comparisons to the approach that, you know, you've, you've used versus kind of more traditional methods? And what are the differences that you see? Um, so, like I say, we, we've done... I think hundreds now of the glasses based studies um, uh, where we just ask people to go and do a shopping trip in store um, and then observe uh, while wearing these eye tracking glasses and then observe what they notice and what they um, uh, 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 what they ignore um, we we have made the films when we make these things um, with that in mind to try and replicate the reality of how people wander around a store and in that sense the, the 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 attention that the pos gets in the films is is very similar to the attention that um it gets in reality because we've tried to make the films as close to the reality of how people wander around a store out there so it's not quite as good as um uh, uh, as, as getting people to wear the glasses uh, or go in store and see real things it is a model rather than uh the it's a map rather than than the terrain as they say um but um because it's so flexible it allows you to do these a b tests um uh, with, with much greater ease so close enough uh not not exactly the same but um good enough to to actually influence decision making great another question come in um have you ever used this kind of technology to test branch or store layouts rather than specific ads? Um, we, we haven't yet, no. Um, but it, it is something that could easily be done if, if, if that's what you wanted. You could make two different films, uh, one, with, one with the store laid out in one way and one with the store laid out in the other way. 
Um, so yes, that that would be that would be pretty easy to do. Making the films is it, you know is dependent on it, it doesn't it doesn't take very much time or effort. You just need a guy with a camera, um, and and you need to know what the shop you know the the, the, the imagined customer journey is. Um, that's actually the easy bit. Um, mucking around with the the visuals afterwards is is very very complicated. Um, uh, but that, well, the technology is very complicated. But, but the guys at Myriad have made that very easy to do. So that's pretty easy as well. Okay, next question. Thank you everyone for submitting questions. It's great, we've got them rolling in now. Um, have you used this technology to test online content? And if so, how successful was it? Um, well, that's the majority of our business actually, is testing uh, websites and um, uh, 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 face uh, ads on Facebook or even posts on Facebook and, 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 and so on. So we use exactly the same technology uh, to a slightly different end. Um, uh, so, so the answer is absolutely yes, we, we, do, we do, you know, and, and, in, and in some ways last year we were very happy to win an award for, for this innovation um, that turns your computer's webcam into an eye tracking camera. And, but computers are one thing, the really exciting thing for us, the thing that we're really, really proud of, is the ability to turn your phone's webcam into an eye tracking camera. So I'd say that almost, well, perhaps 15% of our business is now testing ads and, and content on Facebook or ads and content on, on, on newspapers and, 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 and brands um, uh, on mobile phones um, using a similar approach, but obviously to a slightly different end. Okay, uh, thank you. Next question. Have you tested or how would you test differing mindsets while shopping? Um, for example, um, with Tesco's, you might expect a large difference in attention for a big shop versus a top up. Well, yeah, absolutely. That's a, that's a very good um, uh, point. Um, so we do it in two ways. One is we make slightly different films or can make slightly different films. So what does the film look like if you're just popping in to um, buy a, a pint of milk and um, you know some nappies or something like that versus what does the your experience or like the actual you know, uh, of doing a, a, a big shop so that's one way of doing it and then the second thing is that we often prime um, the uh, respondents to say you know we give them a bit of a scenario beforehand please watch this film as if you are just nipping in to get um, uh, some uh, loaf of bread or please watch this film or, or, or a bit of this film because no one would sit and watch a film for an hour um, if that's how long it takes to go around Tesco or Sainsbury's and so we prime them to say imagine you're on a big shop and none of it's perfect um, uh, because it, this is watching a film of someone doing stuff but like I say the advantage is that instead of getting 10 people to do an, um, uh, a shop in store, you can get a hundred or, 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 or well, actually perhaps even, perhaps even two, yeah, yeah, 200 and something or other people for the same price, you know, as you get 10 people um, in a real store, you can get about 200 or so uh, people to, 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 to watch a, a film and, um, and then code up their data there. And instead of it taking three to six weeks, it can take three to six days. Um, okay, actually that's going to be one of my questions, was going to be, yeah, how long does it take roughly to turn a study around? Say it was a multivariate study, how long would that take? Well, um, once you've made the initial film, and it depends, you can either use the, the films that we made for Tesco, um, uh, that are just there, or you could make your own films. Um, that usually takes about a week if you want to make your own films. Once you've got that, the turnaround time is is about, like I say, three to six days. So you send us the POS that you want tested. It can be, you know, one element or, 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 or ten. We'll work with Myriad to, to edit the films and include the green and the yellow and the red POS and turn them into three different variants, say. And then we'll email out uh, things to um, uh, the right target audience and then get a result back to you. Obviously, if it's a it's a simple test and it's a, 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 a simple recruit um, you know young mums or you know meat eaters or, or whatever um, it's it's much quicker and, and easier if you want a very very precise group 
um, of people, you know, vegans or, or, or you know, um, lactose intolerant people or people who haven't bought Cadbury's for, you know, in the last six months or, or, or whatever, whatever that might be. Sometimes the, it takes longer for us to find the right people. But um, if it's a, it's the, the quickest we've done, I think, is three days and the average time is around about six. Okay, that's great, thank you. Um, I think that's all the questions we've had coming in. If anyone's got any, any last minute burning questions, please type them in now. I'm just gonna read a couple of um, aura messages um, while that's happening. Um, our next webinar is on the 31st of March and it's at half 12 and it'll be uh, Kath Rhodes from Qual Street talking about how she worked with stakeholders at Bells of Lazenby to ensure Insight was at the heart of the launch of their first free from cake range. And that case study won the MRS ICG Qualitative Award last year. Secondly, um, our April uh, seminar, which was due to be held on the 29th, is still going ahead, but um, it will be delivered uh, online. More information to follow on that. Um, and in terms of information and updates, can I please encourage you to sign up uh, to the OWA website so we can share information with you. We've got a new website and we please would um, encourage you to go on and register if you haven't already because you'll need to register in order to use the forum, sign up for events or access um, any playback and any other resources. So please go to aura.org.uk and click on create an account in the top right hand corner. Um, We've had no more questions come in, so um, I think we'll wrap everything up. So I'd like to thank Mike for delivering such a great presentation and answering uh, the questions. And um, the, the webinar will be available on the OR website. And um, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thanks very much, guys.